A couple of days ago, the Vatican responded to a dubia. No, not that dubia. Cardinal Burke has waited over 1,640 days, that's 1,640 days, since the dubia was submitted for an answer, and he's never getting an answer from the hierarchy this side of heaven. No, Francis addressed a dubia submitted to him over, shall we say, the James Martin question. You know, that topic that Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church works tirelessly for, despite the church having always taken the opposite stance of his since the very beginning, since the time of the apostles. Sacred scripture, sacred tradition, all of it takes the opposite stance that Pastor Jimmy has. And he has even gone so far as to publicly deny the inerrancy of sacred scripture when he said that St. Paul was wrong on that topic. So imagine the Catholic world surprised when the Vatican responded to a dubia asking if those sorts of, shall we say, bindings could be blessed by the church. And the answer was no. And they even reminded people that sin was what we were talking about and that the church cannot bless that sort of thing. Amazing, right? <laughs> Credit where it's due, though a few people I have spoken with who are intimately familiar with how Jesuits operate assure me that we should wait for the other shoe to drop before celebrating, especially with something called the theology of love coming. But for now, I'll be happy on this score. For once, the Catholic way was promoted, and Francis and the Vatican have caught flack from the same voices of the world that typically sing his praises. I know, this is a strange day. But the response to the statement from the Vatican has been absolutely astonishing. What I'm about to show you is some of the most brazen calls for schism that I have ever seen. Remember, and I'll say this repeatedly throughout, this stuff is coming from the same folks who tell us that we as traditionally minded Catholics are the ones in schism because we object to modernism and modernist clergy teaching things opposed to what the church has always taught or opposed to modernist clergy just behaving like they're not priests. For instance, if you make a tweet pointing out the bad actors, you'll get hammered in the replies by modernist e-clergy. And why is that? Because there is a belief that is widespread in the world that the church must change with the times, that the church must be indistinguishable from the world, and that the church must bow to the demands of the secular age that we all suffer in. This was fed by Vatican II itself, which called for opening the windows of the church to the world for some so-called fresh air, that we could learn things from the world about dignity and the rest. This talk of human fraternity goes back to the time of John the Twenty-Third, at least, even if they use different language at the time, even if we now call it human fraternity instead of dignity and the rest. And the responses we have today to Francis making a Catholic-sounding statement illustrate that this problem of modernism goes well beyond the hierarchy. It goes well beyond Francis. It goes well beyond all of that. Many lay Catholics are modernists as well. That's not news, really. But they know that the things they oppose would have been rejected historically by the Church. But I'm not limiting this to the laity either. The Church in Germany also opposed what the Vatican stated, the document that came from the CDF recently, though in some reserve, much more reserved ways than the laity who hang on every word said by Pastor Jimmy Martin. I bring you Exhibit A. It comes from Pastor Jimmy himself. Quote, from Gerard O'Connell, America Magazine's Rome correspondent. Vatican, with Pope Francis's approval, says priests cannot bless bindings described negatively by St. Paul in Romans chapter 1, verses 26 to 27, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 10, and 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. That's not a quote, obviously, but you probably have to understand why I have to tread carefully on this topic. That tweet is meant to set the stage for this. Pastor Jimmy also tweeted that the dubia question with the response being negative. He was very circumspect on how he talked about this on Twitter. He's suddenly feeling pressure to conform publicly to what the church says, and these people should almost rejoice over that by itself. Though it's temporary, as it always is with him. He'll continue his bridge-building campaign without a doubt. I showed that post so I could show you the responses. Get a load of this. Obviously, I'm not going to show who posted these and. I apologize for my haphazard photoshopping here to uh, sort of respect the identities of people to keep them private. So don't go looking for the people in question. But there are plenty of people talking on the moral quagmire that is social media. They're trying to res they're responding that the church is wrong on this and demanding that the church change what it teaches because the church is being mean. 
The watchword for our time is fraternity and group hugs and possibly the most misunderstood teaching of our blessed Lord, judge not, which is the most misunderstood thing theologically because the concept of judgment is different in the church than what the world says that the word means, which isn't surprising to say the least, but this is my favorite response of all of them. Feast your eyes or ears on this. It's from someone we'll call V. Quote, Father James, please lead a movement to split the Jesuits from the Vatican. What a great church that would be! End quote. It even has emoji hands clasped in prayer. This isn't a comment in isolation, either. There were many variations of this on social media, both on Twitter and on Facebook. Now just ponder that one for a moment and really think about the implications of it. There are people honestly asking Pastor Jimmy to cause a schism over this issue, one that is clearly laid out by St. Paul in Romans chapter 1, verses 26 to 27, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 10, and 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. It's widespread, too, and I hate to say it, but I almost want them to do it. Now, I said almost. It is an urge that I'm resisting. The real Catholic response is to hope they change their hearts and minds on this, and to pray and fast for them to do so. But remember, these are the same folks who point the finger and say that we are not in communion with Rome because we want the same faith that was taught 60 years ago, or 500 years ago, to be taught today by the church, that we want the TLM, which can be demonstrated to go back to St. Gregory the Great, that we want the reverent Byzantine and Maronite and Chaldean liturgies that respect their liturgical traditions, that we want the church to take the hard t stances on tough issues publicly, and frankly, that the church was too soft on this response, that the church must be salt and light in the world and not go with the ebbs and tides of the secular realm. These are the same voices calling us schismatics for just trying to be authentically Catholic, the way that those who came before us were, because we want in our wildest hopes and dreams to achieve a level of sanctity that the saints we admire most did. It's hard not to want them to get their wish that Pastor Jimmy Martin really does found the Jesuit church. And, by the way, I called this two years ago at least when I started calling him Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church. I did that for a reason. Hopefully now people see the truth in the joke. But the lady aren't the only ones responding in this kind of way. The church in Germany is voicing its dissent from the Vatican, saying that there are no easy answers. It's kind of weird because the traditions of the church, sacred scripture, and if this were on any other topic modernist love, they'd say also magisterial authority, is saying all of this as well that there is an easy answer, and the answer is in the negative. But okay. The Catholic News Agency reported that Bishop Botzing has formally voiced his rejection of this, which isn't surprising. The Germans have already stated that they plan to forge ahead with their synodal process to address all the issues the world demands the Church submit to. And this is just what one of them. They have a laundry list. CNA says that Batzing stated that there were no easy answers on the issue, and they reminded us that Bishop George Batzing is the president of the German Bishops' Conference. That's important, and that he made the comment March 15th, mere minutes after the CDF released the document with the full blessing of Francis. Again, I have been reminded that the Jesuit method is often to do one thing as a prelude to doing the opposite. That remains to be seen here, though, just but don't be surprised if that happens. Anyway. Botzing, who is a modernist through and through, said that the CDF statement conflicted with, quote, the state of church teaching as expressed in several Roman documents. And he continued, in Germany and in other parts of the worldwide church, there have been discussions of some time for the way in which this teaching and doctrinal development in general can be advanced with viable arguments. On the basis of fundamental truths of faith and morals, innovative theological reflection, and also an openness to more recent results of the human sciences and the life situations of people today. There are no easy answers to questions of this kind. End quote. Note something here. The applications of the norms and terms of the world to the church and its theology. I really dislike when people do that, especially or regardless, rather, of their views of things, because, frankly, the church's teachings don't conform to any secular program. And it's really strange that he talked about the human sciences. That's the social sciences. And as a trained social scientist, I don't have much respect, if any, for the social sciences. I can find examples, though, of things that the church says that sound like they align with the program of any secular faction of any kind, if you want it to. It really isn't that hard when things are taken in isolation. But note that we're seeing hints of Teilhard de Chardin here. 
with the idea that theology can evolve, that the truth can change to reflect the changes in the world. Note that, and remember that that is what we're actually dealing with here. Something here is worth noting as people rejoice over the Vatican statement. In addition to this being the year of St. Joseph, this is the year to commemorate Amoris Laetitia's anniversary. It's weird having a commemorative year for a papal encyclical, by the way. That is definitely something new to this pontificate. But Amoris Laetitia in paragraph 250 contradicts what the Vatican released a couple of days ago. Or so the proponents of Pastor Jimmy's positions are saying. Bishop Botzing cited it, and many more voices will in the coming days. And that is one reason why I suspect the Vatican will, in the coming weeks or months, issue a statement that seems to contradict what was said earlier this week on the Pastor Jimmy Martin topic. All of this doesn't matter that much, though, in the immediate. We are talking about people who really do need our prayers. And the best statement we could have hoped for from Rome in these days and times was a simple no. And we got that. If the people we are talking about had received an, a yes answer, they'd have been demanding we submit to the changing of what the church teaches. The world would be throwing parades in Francis's honor, and instead, we'd be hunkering down for more signs of the imminent end. So yes, for the time being, be happy with what transpired on Monday, but do not take it for granted. Things may change, and as the people have, who have reached out to me have said, the Jesuit method often is to do one thing and then follow it with the next. But for now, feel free to be happy. I am. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, like and subscribe if you haven't. It, it does help a lot. And please continue to pray for the church. Thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.